Can you stop? Oh, okay. Gustavo, I'm going to start right off at the beginning with some good news. You too did not cross the imaginary line, which is there so that the speaker does not turn his back to any part of the audience. That's why we stay behind that imaginary line. And you stayed right here. I know the time more than once when you were out among the audience and we have broken you of that habit. Good thing. <laughs> You're a very smooth talker. Your voice almost lulls a person to sleep. It's so smooth. And I think that's a wonderful quality to have in the voice. People will listen to you very intently because you do have that smoothness when you speak. But you might want to use a little more vocal variety, otherwise people sometimes will be able to drift off instead of concentrating on what you're saying. So instead of always being really smooth and nice, put a little punch in your speech every once in a while to wake us up. <coughs> Good information. The content of your speech was very relevant to the Toastmaster environment. You define the words that we use and their specific meanings when we're trying to persuade someone, instead of saying, I want you to do this or that, you would use the word we. We think this, we would appreciate it, we would this or the other thing. That is more persuasive than if you just say, I want you to. Just say, we would appreciate it if, and so that way you can persuade people. I thought that was something I hadn't ever thought about before. Now your visual aid, you're supposed to use a visual aid here, and boy, I was dinging you up and down the whole speech until I found out you were planning to use the PowerPoint, which doesn't work. So you had this little itty bitty teeny thing here, and just, this is my visual aid. <laughs> what? <laughs> But I can understand now why you weren't quite as prepared. However, you've been here a while and you know that sometimes that thing does not work. So next time you're counting on using the PowerPoint, this goes for everybody, come prepared in case it doesn't work. Because I think lately, more often it doesn't than it does work. Mm -hmm. I say congratulations to you Gustavo, for doing one thing that should have been done a little earlier, you moved the table and the lectern back because the people who spoke before you have this way up here and therefore their imaginary line was already almost behind them. So kudos to you for moving that table. That was good. And I suggest the next time that you speak and plan on using PowerPoint, Bring at least some notes on a little card instead of with your paper. It will be less obtrusive. Good speech. We all learned a lot from it, and thank you for presenting it to us.